Chapter 2, Section 9 The Buddha briefly explains how consciousness works, and then points out that it can only be transcended by realizing that consciousness itself is a self-fabricated fiction. Such a teaching, however, is not something everyone is prepared to hear. Hence, Buddhas vary their teachings to suit the audience. Section 10 For the Buddha, the path to understanding is not through speculation or philosophical discourse, but through personal realization, which requires avoiding distractions and cultivating whatever brings one closer to one's own mind. Section 11 The cultivation of Buddha knowledge advocated by Buddha in the previous sections is viewed here as having three aspects realizing that dharmas are empty, realizing that dharmas are not empty, and realizing that dharmas are neither empty nor not empty. The division of this section is rather odd in that it ends by having Mahamati pose a question that isn't answered until the following section. Section 12. Among the three aspects of Buddha knowledge mentioned in the previous section, the first was freedom from projections, which is often misinterpreted to mean non-existence. Here, the Buddha steers his audience past the shoals of arguments involving views concerning either existence or non-existence, as both are nothing but the perceptions of one's own mind. The validity of any ontological argument is thus denied, as is the relevance of such arguments. Section 13. As elsewhere in this sutra, Not all of these verses repeat what is said in the prose that precedes them. In this case, they point beyond the alternatives of existence and non-existence to what cannot be described, only experienced. In that regard, they summarize much of the foregoing and not just the preceding section. Section 14. Like all bodhisattvas, Mahamata has vowed to liberate all beings, hence He asks whether such liberation or purification of the mind occurs by degrees or all at once. The Buddha presents a series of eight metaphors, four of which demonstrate how purification takes place by degrees and four of which demonstrate how it takes place all at once. The first four are said to relate to the early stages of the Bodhisattva path and the second four to the latter stages. What is noteworthy is that in the light of the two kinds of no-self, beings do not purify their own minds. Rather, their minds are purified by Buddhas. Section 15 Each of the three Buddhas mentioned in the Lankavatara is associated with one of the modes of reality. The Dharmata Buddha establishes the dependent reality of personal realization. The Nishanda Buddha reveals the imagined reality conjured by the mind, and the Nirmata Nirmana Buddha teaches the perfected reality of spiritual practice. Section 16. The attainments of Shravakas and Bodhisattvas are compared. Although both are capable of attaining the truths associated with personal realization, Shravakas remain attached to the self-existence of dharmas and thus are not free of the habit energy of such projections, and the endless round of existence it entails, however subtle. Section 17. This section makes my head hurt. The Buddha contrasts the ultimate reality of personal realization with the so-called first causes of other paths, and thankfully moves on. Section 18 Not only do followers of other paths cling to nihilistic views, Shravakas do also. Compounding their misunderstanding of samsara, or wandering, birth and death, they misunderstand nirvana, or no breath, extinction, and finally misunderstand the teaching of citta matra, or mind only, meant to liberate them, seeing it as nothingness. The Buddha points instead to the projections that comprise repository consciousness as the source of the problem, and to their transformation into correct knowledge through personal realization, not through nihilistic practices. Section 19 Not only is cessation an illusion, so is birth. 
ignorant people believe in existence and non-existence, that things come into existence, persist, and then cease to exist. The Buddhists teach that things neither exist nor do not exist. What seems to exist or not to exist are projections of things as existing or non-existing. Things themselves do not arise. There are no such things as things, only the projections of things. Instead of arguing that things arise as the result of causes, and because they do not exist by themselves, they are empty of self-existence, and because they are empty of self-existence, they neither arise nor cease. The Lankavatara sees this as the long way round, and simply denies that anything arises in the first place. Arising is a delusion. Nothing arises. The relevance of the Buddha's discussion of dharmas and non-dharmas at the end of chapter 1 becomes clearer now.